there's a huge shift that's going on in the, the church landscape of America. We're shifting from the day of the ordained to the day of the ordinary, where God indeed ordains the ordinary to do his work, and he gets more glory for it. I think that God is on the edge of uh, breaking us free from a lot of traditions. Well, he basically says, listen, come back to me, come back to the book, come back to the promised land, come back to original Christianity, come back and you guys will change the world. Well, I think in the West we've made a, we've attempted with good intentions to, to glorify God and what we've done is we've elevated how we do church to such a status that it takes a professional and even in most cases a professional team to pull it off. People were basically spectators. They were just sitting in the pew Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday night after Wednesday night. So much in, in, in legacy Christianity is basically a holy meeting, in a holy day, in a holy building, at a holy hour with holy people dressed in holy clothes listening to holy priests. People have been spectators in the life of the church for so many years they don't even know they have a ministry. More and more people uh, I'm finding in American culture are just flat out disinterested in big room events uh, that are related to church. I think part of what, what uh, the world is rejecting right now in what they see in the church is facades. Because most people when they think of the word church they think of a building with a steeple on it and, and that's not what church is. Church is God's people involved in doing God's business. So there's a number of believers that are essentially leaving the traditional church, um, still have an intimate relationship with Christ and are finding another place to be nurtured and fellowship. Uh, Reggie McNeil said that people are leaving the traditional church in order to preserve their faith. People who are open to Jesus but not open to church. If we are going to really affect the nations of the world and multiply at the pace God wants us to multiply, it has to be done much simpler. Where rather than the plans and purposes of men going forward, it's really about the plans and purposes of God going forward. Believe that God can really do this in the body, not a body. If we are going to see uh, many of the pockets of people in North America who are truly unreached people, people without church in their background, come to know Christ, it was going to happen through um, very different kinds of understandings of what it means to follow Jesus in terms of the relationships and the organization of that. God says, give me back my church so that I can give it back to the world. We want to lower the bar of how we do church and raise the bar of what it means to be a disciple. Church is moving from being the greatest indoor spectator sport in the world to being a great participation where every person finds a real home in a park. Move out of organized religion back to the God who loves you out of your socks. Move out of your church buildings and be again there where you're supposed to be, which is where the pain is, where the hurt is, where the people are. They don't just do the ministry somewhere back at some church they go to on the weekend, but they're doing the ministry 24-7 during the week with the people amongst themselves, and they're being the church and can do the church there. Jesus is trying to get his church back. I think it's been under man's control. Um, 500 years ago, as we know, God gave the Bible um, back to the ordinary people, into the hands of the ordinary people. And as someone has said recently, uh, you know, 500 years on in the Second Reformation, in a sense, God's giving the church back to the ordinary people. What, um, what I've been seeing is I've been asking the question, how does the unchurched North American come to not only entrust their life to Christ, but really move on to maturity in Christ? What, it takes to get from there to there uh, involves a level of intimacy and relationship that um, isn't going to happen just in a big room. We can't be a, a come to us type church. We have to be a go to and it has to be contextualized in every area so that we can see because it. Because people are hungry for what simple church has to offer. Yeah, I think Americans in general are asking spiritual questions, meaning questions, and uh, I think if we come to them on their turf, in their world, speak their language, uh, many, many of them will, will join us in the kingdom. I know that for most of us, we've learned to grow things, but we haven't learned to reproduce, and reproduce at every level, leaders, small groups, churches. If you really sincerely uh, have a core value of multiplication, the only way you're ever gonna see a, a multiplication movement is with simple churches. It's very, very difficult to take a church of 1,000 or 5,000 and, and have it double in size in a year. 
but if you have a group of 12 people in a home, you can do that. And it's actually the, the people in the church as a, as a collective body that are responsible for then starting churches. Yes, we can step out of our comfort zone and become the body of Christ that we were designed to be. Um, they've got some hurdles to get over. One of them is years and years of indoctrination to sit down and shut up. The unique contribution of this simple church movement has to do with how many different groups of people have come together and are really listening to the Lord together, setting aside their own personal agendas in many cases in order to see the kingdom advance. It is absolutely essential that lay people start churches. Uh, the church has been preparing them for ministry in the church, but not ministry in their world. 1 Corinthians 14, 26 says, how is it, brethren, when you come together? Uh, every one of you has have something to share, uh, either uh, a song or hymn, you have a scripture, you have a revelation, a tongue interpretation. Let everything be done for building up the body of Christ. The reality of simple church is the idea of living out the life of Christ in the midst of the people on a regular basis. It becomes much more of a family. And uh, if the needs are such that family isn't the theme for this week, you shift into being a hospital. If somebody's really got a, a severe problem of some sort, you should sort of shut everything down, take care of the immediate problem. Uh, sometimes you cycle into it being a school because there's teaching that needs to happen. And uh, sometimes, hopefully, you cycle into being an army. A typical house church, basically about 10, 15 people would, would do four things. They would have a meeting, M-E-A-T-I-N-G. They would eat. The eating business was absolutely crucial to the ministry of Jesus. He was almost a specialist in eating in other people's homes. Secondly, they were sharing life, not an hour. Number three, they don't just listen to someone exposed in the Bible in three points in 31 minutes and then go home and forget 95% on the way. They are partaking, participating in almost eating the Bible together. Number four, they were praying and prophesying. Praying is when we talk to God, prophesying is when God talks to us. It's designed where there's community, where we turn our chairs to face each other, we're not looking at the back of each other's heads, and there's not rows of noses, but we're doing things in community, we're learning in community, we're sharing with one another, and there's accountability. You're free to just follow the Lord and do what He says to it's about the spontaneity, it's about following the Holy Spirit. You know, our meetings together, it's a little bit like uh, having a, a conductor of a, an orchestra. And in the last year, it's broken out from underground. I think it's become a more recognizable movement. Uh, there have been many books that have come out this past year that are alerting the rest of the world that there's something happening. Almost every day I get a phone call from somebody or an email from somebody saying, um, you know, I love Jesus. I just can't keep doing church the way I've been doing it. I've heard about house churches. Can you help me? There is a baby born already in America. There's a, there's a house church movement that goes all over the place. It's probably a church you never knew, but it's there. I've had the privilege with Dawn Ministries to travel around the country a good bit. And what we've seen are these, uh, these uh, either individual or networks of house churches beginning to spring up sovereignly, independent of one another. I believe that because it's been brewing under the surface for a long time, it's now to the point where you can't go back. It's unstoppable. This is the new coming church. It's, it's, it's what you will probably be in in the future. This whole house churches, networks of house churches, will become mainline in America and will be a type of church that actually assembles around tables in homes where you'll eat and celebrate and cry and laugh and stadiums. After all, why are these stadiums good? For sports? Are you kidding? So where every member of the body of Christ here know that they're living in their destiny and that not one person will go to their grave with their music still in them, but they'll sing their song and reach the purpose God's got them here. Not just go along the places on Sunday, throw a bit of money in the plate so someone else can reach their destiny, but they'll reach their destiny.